Welcome to Organic Chemistry course. These first few videos are introduction to organic chemistry and as part of the introduction we will only survey the most important general chemistry concepts. So these are kind of concepts such as electrons and orbitals that you are already supposed to be familiar with and this is only a very brief survey. It's not even a review. It will take too much time to do a review. It's only a survey to draw your attention. These concepts are very important. And so, if necessary, you may want to review them further. Look at your old textbook or maybe look at some other materials online. We will also look at duet and octet rules and finally ionic and covalent bonds. You are all familiar with the structure of atom. It is composed of nucleus, which in turn is composed of protons and neutrons, and the nucleus is surrounded by electrons. To a chemist, electrons are really the important ones. Electrons are of interest because electrons participate in bond formation. The most useful definition or view of electrons for us is quantum mechanical view. So uh, quantum mechanics views electrons as waves. A behavior of electron is described by mathematical function and uh, that mathematical behavior gives us a wave function. So that's the mathematical function, wave function. Solutions of the wave function are individual orbitals. Uh, there are uh, different views at what is the physical meaning of an orbital, but an orbital is not a physical phenomenon. While electron exists, it's a physical entity, an orbital is not a physical phenomenon. And so it is a little bit difficult to explain what is an orbital. One way to view orbital is as probability of finding an electron in a particular region of space. If we take S orbital as an example, that probability is actually of finding an electron from the nucleus. So electron actually could be at the nucleus, even though probability of finding it there is infinitesimally small, anywhere to infinity. And if you think about it, that's not a very useful definition. So we actually have to narrow down this definition, make it even more arbitrary. And so we define an orbital as a region of space in which the probability of finding an electron is 90%. When we apply that cutoff, that gives us those familiar shapes of SPDF orbitals. Orbitals of the same energy are called degenerate orbitals. Of course, orbitals are characterized by four quantum numbers, which we're not going to cover here. But degenerate orbitals have same energies. So you need to know this term as it's often used. Electrons in an atom can be classified as core electrons and valence electrons. And it's only valence electrons that participate in bonding. So it's valence electrons, those in the outermost shell, that are responsible for chemical and physical properties of an element. When it comes to electronic configuration of an atom, there are three principles that are applied to determine electron configuration of an atom. First is Aufbau principle, that's German for building up, that electrons fill orbitals from lowest energy up higher in the, in the order of increasing energies. Then Pauli exclusion principle, that only two electrons with opposite spin can fit in a single orbital. And finally, Hund's rule, which tells us that in case of degenerate orbitals, electron fill those orbitals first one per orbital. So orbitals are first half filled, and only if all of the degenerate orbitals are half filled, then electrons start to pair up. And here is this mnemonic, which I hope you're all familiar with, how these three principles are applied to determine electron configuration of an atom. So following the arrows, 1s orbital is filled first, then 2s, 2p, 2s, 3p, 4s, and so on. To form a chemical bond, atoms either transfer or share electrons. How many electrons can be in the outermost shell, valence shell, is determined by duet and octet rules. Uh, atoms in the first period, first row of the periodic table, obey duet rule, which means that when forming compounds in a molecule, such atom can have at most two electrons in the valence shell. That really applies only to hydrogen, because the second atom in this period, helium, already has two valence electrons and is not capable of forming 
chemical bonds. Elements of the second period follow octet rule, which means that in compounds they can have maximum of eight electrons. Now, while this applies to entire second period, in practice it applies only to boron, carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, and fluorine. Lithium and beryllium form ionic compounds by losing electrons, by giving up their valence electrons, and neon as a noble gas does not form compounds. Finally, uh, elements in the third and subsequent periods of periodic table can exceed octet. So while often they follow octet rule, that's not always the case, and so octet rule cannot be strictly applied. Two types of chemical bonding are ionic and covalent bonding. Ionic bonds are formed by transfer of electrons. Electrons are transferred from one atom or group to another, which results in formation of ions, oppositely charged ions, and then those ions are held together through electrostatic interactions. One common example of ionic bonding, which you're probably familiar with, is formation of sodium chloride. So sodium atom is ionized, uh, and energy uh, has to be put in, in form of ionization energy, to separate an electron from sodium atom. The result is formation of sodium cation, and electron is released. In the next step, a chlorine atom acquires that electron, and in this case, actually energy is released, because now chlorine ends up with completely filled octet, with its, with its outermost shell filled. That's called electron affinity. So first process ionization required energy because charges had to be separated. And of course, separation of opposite charges is not favorable process, so it requires energy. Second process releases energy. And finally, two oppositely charged ions, sodium cation and chloride anion, are held together through electrostatic interactions. So um, that would be formation of ionic bond. Now, as represented, the atomic molecule of sodium chloride exists only in gas phase. Typically, ionic compounds exist in form of crystal lattice. So ionic compounds are solid crystalline compounds. There are some that are liquids, but they are relatively rare. And in a such crystal lattice, each ion is surrounded by as many oppositely charged ions as possible. For that reason, ionic bond is non-directional. And that's why ionic bond is very strong, because to break bond between, for example, sodium and chlorine ions, it requires breaking of number of bonds, not just one. We can see it here, coordination number, number of oppositely charged ions, one ion is surrounded by, is six. So really, effectively, to separate each sodium cation from chloride anion, it requires breaking of really six bonds, not just one. For that reason, ionic bond is very strong, it requires a lot of energy to break, and ionic compounds are usually uh, hard, rigid uh, solids. Covalent bond is result of sharing of electron pair or possibly more than one electron pair. By sharing electron pair, atoms achieve configuration of the nearest noble gas. So they completely fill the valence uh, electron shell. Some examples of covalent bond include formation of molecule of hydrogen, so two hydrogen atoms share an electron pair, and that way each hydrogen has duet of electrons in its outermost shell. Another example is formation of chlorine molecule, where two chlorines share electron pair so that they can have octet, or again, filled valence electron shell. Finally, different atoms can combine to form covalent bond, and that would involve, for example, a formation of a bond between hydrogen and chlorine. So that way, uh, the two of them share an electron pair, and hydrogen has duet, while chlorine has octet of electrons. Covalent bond could be polar or non-polar. If electron pair is shared evenly, which means that two atoms or two groups that are sharing the electron pair uh, have equal affinity for the shared electron pair, then bond is non-polar. There is no charge separation in that bonding, so the bond is non-polar. Alternatively, if one atom or group attracts electron pair more strongly than the other, then electron pair is not shared evenly, 
electron density is closer to one atom or group than the other and bond is polarized. It means that one end of the bond has excess negative charge while the other one has excess positive charge. So one bond has partial negative, the other partial positive charge. Partial charges are uh, labeled as delta plus and delta minus. So we use lowercase Greek symbol delta and so delta plus, delta minus mean partial charges. Those are only qualitative measurements, they are not quantitative. So there is no number associated with delta. It simply means that charge is somewhere larger than zero and smaller than one, so between zero and one. And for that reason, uh, those numbers uh, don't necessarily add up. So for example, a molecule like molecule of water has two partial positive charges on hydrogen atoms and one negative charge on oxygen and partial negative charge on oxygen. And still overall molecule of water is neutral. So unlike full charges, which have to cancel out for molecule to be neutral, partial charges do not. An alternative way to indicate charge separation is by using this crossed arrow. And when we use crossed arrow to indicate polar bond, then crossed part, one that looks like a little symbol plus, is positive end of the dipole, positive end of the bond, and arrowhead is the negative end of the bond. And here we have examples of polar bonds in hydrogen chloride and molecule of water shown by using both conventions, delta plus and delta minus symbols and crossed arrow. A concept that is very closely related to polar and nonpolar covalent bonds and ionic bonds is that of electronegativity. Electronegativity is tendency of an atom, ion or a group to attract the shared electron pair. Electronegativity is periodic property and here is periodic table. This is actually a very abbreviated periodic table. This is what we call sometimes organic periodic table. It shows only the few of the most important elements that are commonly encountered in organic chemistry. You can see that electronegativity increases going from left to right across a period and decreases going down a group. Whether bond will be uh, covalent or ionic, and if it's covalent, whether it will be polar or non-polar, depends on difference in electronegativities between the atoms that form that bond. So if difference is between 0 and 0 0.2, including 0 0.2, that bond is non-polar covalent, which means that electron pair is evenly shared by the two atoms. If difference in electronegativity is larger than 0.2, but less than 1.7, then bond is polar covalent. So this is still polar, this is still covalent bond, it's formed by sharing of electrons, but it's polar. Finally, if difference in electronegativities is 1.7 or greater, then that's ionic bond. It's formed by transfer of electrons. Don't confuse electronegativity with electron affinity. Electron affinity is an energy that is released when negative ion is formed. So when atom gains an electron to form a negative ion. And this is a real physical process where atom gains an electron and we can measure electron affinity. Electron affinity is a concept that is important only when we are considering ionic bond because it's part of process of formation of ionic bond. On the other hand, electronegativity is a theoretical concept. We have different electronegativity scales. The most common one and one we will use in this course and one that is shown here is Pauling electronegativity scale where fluorine is assigned electronegativity of 4 and all others are given electronegativities relative to fluorine, of course smaller than fluorine. And electronegativity is ability to attract shared electron pair. So electron pair must be shared for electronegativity to be applied as a concept, to have a meaning as a concept. Which means that electronegativity makes sense only when two atoms or groups share electron pair. So electronegativity is a concept that is only associated with a covalent bond. This completes this short video on review of some very basic introductory concepts, and in the next video we'll examine Lewis structures.